In this video, we'll show how you can view the training process from the Tau Toolkit in TensorBoard, a visual tool for machine learning and experimentation. We'll use one of the many computer vision notebooks for this example. Now, I have already configured my system with the Tau Toolkit, and so if you need to do that, please refer to the Getting Started page for more info. Today, I'm going to be using a YOLO v4 notebook as an example. We are going to look at the impact of changing the learning rate between two versions of the same model. Learning rate is essentially the size of the steps taken by the model to achieve the lowest cost function. To set the learning rate, navigate to the specs directory, click on the training spec file for any one of these experiments. For the first experiment, we'll start with the default learning rate as shown here. In the second experiment, we'll set a higher learning rate. We can expect the model to reach the cost function a lot quicker. And finally, to enable TensorBoard, set the visualization to true in both the training spec files. With the training specification set, let's head over to the Jupyter Notebook to begin our training. We'll enable the environment variables by running the first cell in the notebook. This is an essential step to enable the training progress. The next cells here deal with downloading and installing the Tau Toolkit launcher, which we'll skip as we've already have this installed. The next cells here download and convert the format of the dataset required for training. Then we'll download the pre-trained model directly from the NGC catalog. And finally, you can review the training parameters we said earlier in the cells here. Okay, now we are ready to start training. I'm going to run the first experiment with the default learning rate. Depending on the size of the model, it may take a few minutes for the model to initiate and start solving. As you can see that the training process has now started. We can now view the progress in TensorBoard. To do this, you'll need to start a new terminal session. Remotely log into the machine and then navigate to the folder where the results are being written. Enter the syntax shown here. This will enable you to view multiple experiments in the same TensorBoard window. You can also refer to the documentation for the exact syntax. The command will generate a specific URL. You simply need to copy and paste it into a new browser tab. Ensure that you enter the correct IP address of the machine. So now we have TensorBoard running in our browser. You can view scalar plots in the first tab. These include average precision for the various classes in our model, the training loss, the learning rate, the mean average precision, and also the validation loss. The next tab shows the model predictions on the input images that are recorded per epoch. The next two tabs give you access to some advanced data that includes histograms of the model weights in each layer as well. All these metrics are recorded and displayed in real time. We'll let this training complete for 80 epochs and then view the final set of results. The model training is not complete. Let's take a look at the results we can view the summary of the results in the Jupyter Notebook. Now let's take the results in detail in TensorBoard as well. Again, you'll see the accuracy for each class within our model. We can also see the final training loss, the resulting learning rate, the mean average precision, as well as the validation loss, all after 80 epochs. So we now know where we stand with our first experiment. Let's go back to the Jupyter Notebook and run the case with a higher learning rate. Again, this will take a few minutes to initialize and solve. Now that this experiment has started to solve, let's view the results in TensorBoard. You can now see the impact of changing the learning rate to a higher value. The model is converging a lot faster across all the various parameters. We'll let this model run through the 80 epochs and then inspect our final results. You can see quite a big difference in the results between the two experiments shown here in the Jupyter Notebook. It looks like the higher learning rate is showing better results. 
It may just be that we have to run the experiment with the lower learning rate for a few more training epochs. Now, let's compare the results in TensorBoard. Again, the comparison plots show that our second experiment, the higher learning rate, shows better results across the various parameters, such as the average precision for each class, the training loss, the learning rate, the mean average precision, and also the validation loss. With this visual capability, we can now see and compare the results of all our experiments in a single view. You've just seen how easy and powerful it is to visualize and understand the training process in TensorBoard. Now you can change the right hyperparameters of your model in the Tau Toolkit, experiment with various what-ifs, and arrive at an optimized model that fits your use case.